wall that you see, this is glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not the traditional ceramic squares, it's glass squares. But, and then on the countertop, you'll have uh, multiple from sports drinks to soft drinks, chips, cookies, uh, prepackaged sandwiches. There's going to be a lot of different items available at the stand. Well, now we're in one of the more heavily used rooms in the Coliseum, and you may have been in here a time or two for an event or the other, but you may not actually recognize it with all the changes that have been made. This is the Johnny Appleseed Room. Tell us a little bit of what you've done here, Randy. Mike, we have totally renovated the space from new carpeting to wall covering, uh, wall sconces, electrical, and uh, just a lot of freshening. Uh, this is a heavily used room from uh, yesterday a business meeting, uh, this weekend a wedding reception, and uh, just uh, unbelievable versatility to the space. And that's what's being set up right now, what I understand, is a wedding reception. That's right. We have 30,000 square feet of meeting room space, so uh, all of our meeting rooms have been renovated. Uh, the, uh, the, the finishes that you see with this space are very typical of all of our meeting rooms. We've moved now into uh, Exhibit Hall 2 and uh, a lot of work going on in the background, Randy. Sometimes people don't realize uh, what extent you have to go to to get a hall ready for a specific event and, and try to match what that uh, promoter or individual who's in charge of the event is trying to, uh, trying to accomplish. We've just changed from a trade show to now we're setting up for a banquet function. We have two banquets in here over the weekend, Friday night and Saturday. Each one will be set for 500 people. So what we're doing now is we're setting, putting carpeting in place, building a stage behind me. Once that's all done, then uh, lights will be set on the stage, and then the tables and chairs will come in. We're typically working third shift. Our, our overnight crews are our workhorse crews, whether it's in the arena changing from hockey to basketball, or over here putting, uh, putting a trade show in, setting up for a banquet. It's not uncommon for us to run 15 events at the same time. So, What kind of changes do you have? And this is similar to the changes in the other exhibit hall that we were in, I take. Yeah, and it's just a matter of it's all handling freight, whether it's forklifts, uh, bringing ta chair carts in, table, uh, pallets of tables. It's just uh, one piece at a time. And uh, again, a, a large setup like this will take us in the range of 20 to 30 man hours. So, uh, it, and we're never turning over just one space at a time, typically. It's maybe a, an arena changeover at the same time. We're changing over Expos 1, Expo 3, uh, or all the spaces. So you could have a lot of crews at work if one day if you have enough events taking place. We can. Uh, Coliseum has over 500 employees between direct employees and subcontractors. So there's, there are a lot of folks that call the Coliseum their, uh, their home, their place of employment. Once again, that word comes into play, versatility, staying uh, able to uh, change as much as is needed. And that's very important because, uh, as I think most people realize now, the Coliseum is not tax supported. The operations of the Coliseum, it's all earned revenue. So those uh, parking fees, uh, rental fees, that's all a matter of how we're able to pay our, from utility costs to staff and, and everything in between. Coliseum has nearly a $7 million annual budget. So that's, uh, that's what we have to earn to be able to pay our bills on an annual basis. And we talked a lot about the inside changes. You've still got an outside, big outside change, new marquee and sign that's going up uh, in front of the Coliseum to publicize uh, the things that are taking place here. Right. Well, the, the biggest change you would have noticed this summer, of course, is the demolition of Memorial Stadium. So taking the stadium down, creating 800 new parking spaces, putting in a storm scepter. And what that is, it's a, a device below ground. You don't even see it. But as uh, when we have rain, as an example, the first uh, 10 to 20 minutes of rain are when your pollutants will come off the asphalt. So we're collecting those pollutants in this big tank, this pit. And then what's uh, flowing out of that tank, then going to the river, is a uh, clean runoff. So just another improvement and part of our sustainability efforts, too. The sign also oh, that's going up is, well, is a nice addition as well. The sign that you'll see is uh, is a 20 millimeter LED board, and it's going to be spectacular. It should be on, I hope, by the end of this week. Again, some some new programming to learn how to how to operate the new sign, but uh, and it, it is so uh, efficient in terms of use. It has a payback of uh, about four years. Uh, the Coliseum certainly doesn't let grass grow under its feet by any means. Uh, Randy, thanks for taking us around. We appreciate uh, the time and look forward to uh, many more changes at the Memorial Coliseum. Thanks, Mike. Good to have everybody out today. Thanks.